rebounds, trying to get back in to tie this one up as we start our second period of the game. Corbin down to the Lexington Lafayette 15-yard line as the Hounds have it first and 10 from there. Stevens gets the call, but Stevens won't get far, maybe a yard at the most. Yeah, it was clogged up on that side over there, and he was trying to go over uh, where Carter and uh, Creech. Creech was leading the way along with Paul Jackson. Got him a yard to the 14-yard line. Again, we see the presence of Andy Bischoff, 6'1", 215-pound senior, stopping him on that play. So second down and nine from the Lafayette 14-yard line. Just underway here in the second period of this football game. Out of the power formation, on the hash mark to the left side of the football field, Jackson calls. Jackson gives to Fox. Fox across the 15 to the 10, and then he's turned back after getting four yards. Yeah, there's about four of them met him there. Still a good run by him. He's running in there behind uh, Miracle, was trying to get a block on that along with Creech. That is Corbin's 12th play on this drive. They're down to the 10-yard line of Lafayette now. It's going to be third down and four for the first down. So the Red Hounds have been able to maintain ball control in this game, which I think is what they would want to do with the explosive power of Lexington Lafayette, but they still trail by seven to nothing. Down at the 10-yard line now on the third down play. Jackson fakes it to, no, he gives it to Fox. Inside the 10, Fox gets the first down. I think we have a headgear too, as Fox just drives it into the five-yard line, a beautiful run. Yeah, it looked like face mask over there on that, uh, that corner. Number three looked like he got him with a face mask. That's a big penalty. That's a big penalty for us. Average player would have gone down behind the line, but Dale took a couple of people in for the first down. We needed that. We need to penetrate right there. From the five, he gets five yards on the run, and Corbin's seventh first down. But then the penalty will put it half the distance of the goal line to the two and one half. And Corbin has it first down and goal to goal from there. So the Hounds wanting to tie it up here in the second period of this game have an excellent opportunity from the two and a half yard line. Mike Jackson, the quarterback calls. Jackson gives to Fox. Fox off that left side will not get in on the first play. Now he went ahead and put his head in there though. Trying to go off of, uh, off of Carter and uh, Let's see, we got number 62 in there. J uh, Lynn Reeves, Lynn Reeves in there trying to lead that away. Lafayette had Ton Snyder, 5'11", 185 pound senior linebacker to plug up that hole. And so Corbin has it second down and a yard to go for the touchdown. Second and a yard, here's the play, the call, the give. Jackson keeps it right behind Hart. Beautiful play. Super job that time. He went ahead and led, led little Derby in there, and he just followed right in behind him. Found, found that goal line. Mike Jackson with his third touchdown of the year, the first in this game. Corbin will have a chance to tie it up on the point after touchdown. Nine minutes and 37 seconds here in the second period of this game. Seven to six Lafayette. Oh. We're going to have Ben Hoover trying his first point after touchdown of the year. So the sophomore kicker here. Big extra point try. Ferris holding. Here's the kick. It is, oh, what a beautiful kick. Wow. <laughs> that ties it up. Seven to seven. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. You think about the Corbin Redhounds, and when you think television excitement, you should think Southern Cable Fresh. Vision. Southern Cable Vision wants to introduce you to the exciting... Hoover ties the game up with a booming extra point try. And now Dale Fox says, Brian Metzger not in action here tonight. So we have different people doing the kicking. Dale Fox will be doing the kickoff. A nice one. It's a good kick will be taken at the eight yard line, up to the 20, 25, and down at about the 28 yard line. Goes Johnny Robinson, and Lexington Lafayette will have their second offensive series. I uh, see we had, uh, we had Barnett, and, uh, Barnett and Steely on the tackle that time. Lafayette.
Lafayette. In their lineup now, at quarterback, Billy Martin, wing back Vic Johnson, tail back is Antoine George, and the fullback is Doug Cook. Lafayette will line up with Johnson in a slot to the left, George wing to the right, the pitch goes to Johnson, penalty marker dropped as Johnson cuts the corner. 35-40, 45 midfield, but uh, I, that's going for naught, I'm pretty sure. Pretty obvious penalty, I think. Well, what happened, when they set the, uh, set their option man over here on the other side, he didn't, he wasn't set a full count, I don't think, and it, as soon as the play developed, he had one coming in motion, the other man hadn't been set for full count, I think there's a reason for the flag on that. It looked like, almost like two people in motion on the same play, which obviously is illegal, so that nice run by Vic Johnson will be called back and Lexington Lafayette will start at first and 15 from the 23 yard line but again Johnson serves notice of what we have to defend against yeah we can't let him outside we can't do that Lafayette first down and 15 now back at the 23 yard line they have into the lineup in the backfield, Theo Hershey, 5'9", 150-pound junior. Hershey is in motion to the right out of the eye formation as the handoff's given to the fullback, and he's hit hard as he comes to the line of scrimmage. Cook gets short yardage. Got Hensley, got Hensley and Barnett and Creech on the tackle there, and they made him pretty good there at the line of scrimmage. Got him two yards to the 25. The Generals now will be faced with second down and 13 for the first down. Racing into the lineup with the play is Jeff Neal, six foot, 165 pound junior, at the end position. As Lafayette will send Neal to the right side, Hershey is in the slot to the left. Martin, the quarterback for the Generals. From the 25 yard line, it's Martin back to throw. He throws, looking for Johnson behind him, incomplete. Johnson was turning his neck twisting it like a crane out there trying to find the ball, but it was poorly thrown. Poorly thrown pass. We had uh, Stevens, Creech, and uh, Ferris that were in the area. They had uh, two generals in the same area, too, and the ball was actually thrown in between five people. Now, what we saw a moment ago out of the generals, they came up with that big play on third down. Rather, it was the second down at the time. It got 16 yards, and here they have a third down and 13, so you still have to watch against the ability of Johnson to get deep on you. They'll split Johnson in a slot to the right side as the end is split to the right. That is Rob Strumberg. Martin is back to throw. Martin looking for Johnson. He'll throw it hard. It is incomplete. So far, this quarterback is way off target. Yeah, he's put a lot of zip on the ball there. He just he just overthrew 84. 84 was out there in a, in a kind of a, in the middle of the field. He just went ahead and threw it by him. So Stromberg, the intended receiver, it goes incomplete. Lafayette uses up their third down, so they go to fourth and 13, and deep for Corbin. Anticipating the punt will be Dwayne Steely. Steely, a 5'10", 163-pound junior, is waiting back at the 40-yard line. Lafayette has in punt formation Jeff Neal. He's standing back at his own 10. Good snap back. Neal puts the toe to it. Nice punt out of there as Steely didn't even look at the ball. Let it hit. Am I, was he looking? Help me out, Bill. I, I thought he was looking downfield and not at the football. Well, when he, when he first did it, I thought Coach Adams, and I still believe he did, I think Coach Adams wanted the ball to go ahead. He didn't want anybody to put their hands on it. That's what I think because he didn't say anything to Steely when he came off. Well, fortunately, it did not take a good Lafayette roll as the ball hit right beside Steely at the 40 yard line and rolled only down to the 33 where Corbin will take over for their third offensive series of this football game. So the Red Hounds have moved the ball well and each time they've had it, we're tied at seven all, seven minutes and a half to go in the first half. This time from the 33 yard line, Jackson gives to Toby Stevens. Stevens gets a couple to the 35 before the hole closes on him. Well, Lafayette, Lafayette had six men on the line of scrimmage that time and had three linebackers stacked around behind him. Actually, looking at six to eight people to nine people on the line of scrimmage. And we're and, and I noticed in the last series, it was pretty much the same way, except when it got down to the other end. Uh, 
you know, I'd, we're still getting good yardage out of uh, out of our power game with all that people, all those people stacked in there. Lafayette has not proven that they can stop Corbin yet as the Redhounds and the two other drives moved it for three, five yards at a clip. Here they have it second down and eight from their own 35-yard line. Everybody up close on that line of scrimmage now. Out of the power formation, Stevens gets the call. Stevens, good running room right up the middle, has crossed the 40 to the 42. Good run by Toby that time, and we've got good blocking on the line of scrimmage. You got uh, Jackson, uh, Will Sears in there, and I think Will Sears did a good job that time. So the gain is good for seven yards, and third down, a yard to go for the first down. Corbin has a tough schedule. Opened with Danville, then Paris, and now Lexington Lafayette. We're tied here at seven all. On the third and one play, Jackson rolls it along the line of scrimmage, keeps the ball, gets the first down. Mike is up to the 47-yard line and a pickup of uh, five yards or so. I like his running, but I want him to stay healthy. Jackson in his senior year here at Corbin has moved it, let's call it the 48, a pickup of six. And for Corbin in first downs, that is their eighth of the ball game. Lafayette has only one, so Corbin has really dominated play. They've had the ball the majority of the first half, but the score is tied at seven all. Miracle wide to the right side. In the slot is Stevens. Jackson on the option to the right side. Pitches back to Fox. Fox trying to elude people. Cannot do it. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage. They had it covered. They had the pitch man covered. Had the quarterback covered. And they had, had safety coming up to it, too. So it was a good job of defending it by the, by the generals. Nowhere to go for the Red Hounds that time. And they're going to be facing second down and 10 now from their own just shy of the 48-yard line. Five minutes and 25 seconds remaining. We're in the second period of this football game from Campbell Field in Corbin. The home opener for the Red Hounds. Kyle Jones goes wide to the left, Miracle wide to the right. Corbin passed only four times last week. They have not passed thus far tonight. They are here. Back to throw Jackson. Looks, he's got his man. Steely at midfield. The 45, the first down to the 41-yard line of Lafayette. I tell you what, he did a good job of concentrating on catching the football, and after he caught it, he had a good lick put on him, and he did a good job of breaking that and getting the first down. Good job of Steely and a good pass by Jackson. 11 yards on that pass play to Dwayne Steely, the junior halfback. So Mike Jackson with people coming right at him. Put it right on target to Steely, and Corbin has picked up their ninth first down of this first half. And now the Red Hounds are going to call timeout. We have four minutes, 50 seconds to go in the first half of this game from Campbell. Not at 7-7 seven to seven at this point, but very impressive with the way that Corbin is moving the football here tonight, Bill. They're, they are moving it awfully well. Uh, again, and we said there a minute ago, they've got all those people on the line of scrimmage there. They're, they're using a couple of different defenses, moving in and out there, the generals are, and they look a little bit like Danville lined up against. And of course, I'm sure they, they scouted that, and that's what they're going by. Have a first down just shy of the 40-yard line as the handoff is given to Stevens. Stevens loses the ball. They stripped him. A penalty marker goes down. I think Lafayette has the ball, but we'll have to wait to see what has transpired. Toby... Toby was barely moving, but he was not down when the ball was stripped from him, and Lafayette may get it. It's holding against Corbin. Lafayette will get the football at their own 42-yard line and a big break for the Generals. They just stripped the ball from him in the backfield before he ever got to the line of scrimmage. I, think he, I don't think he had a real good handle on it, and that might have been the reason that he wasn't moving the way he was supposed to. He was not down when the ball was knocked away from him. And since the penalty was against Corbin for holding, Lafayette gets it, so that stops their third drive of the night. And Lafayette gets good field position at their own 42-yard line. Lafayette has started tonight from the 29, their 28. Corbin has started from the 31, 33, and 33 in their three offensive series. Martin is checking with his backfield now, trying to get them lined up properly. I still don't know if they are. Cook, the fullback, Johnson, everybody moving around back there. They're going to have to call timeout. Well, your quarterback lined up behind the guard that time. He was trying to get his backfield set because they couldn't figure out what he was trying to call and didn't remember it. And then the tackle had to tell him he was lined up behind the guard, so then he went ahead and took the timeout. 
So with timeout, 4-13 in the first half. Timeout on the score, Corbin 7, Lop. Now the Generals are set to go from their own 42-yard line, first and 10 on the first play after the fumble. Johnson in motion to the right side. It's a counter in the backfield, and George is hit and taken down behind the line at the 40. I'm pretty sure it's Ansley, and it is. Good job of Mark Ansley. Had help from Jeff Crook, 67, and Creech, number 22. But Hensley was there to make sure that George was going nowhere. He loses two yards to the 40, and Lafayette will have its second down and 12. Corbin has dominated here in the first half of this game, but we're tied at 7-all with three minutes and 44 seconds to go in the half. And, of course, Lafayette looking at that scoreboard, knowing they have very little time to try to drive it downfield. Johnson wide out to the left side. Sams comes up to cover up on him. It's the fake draw. Now back to throw is Martin. He throws. Johnson has it. He was out of bounds. That's right. Good call by the official. I'm watching, I'm watching Coach Adams, and I'm watching Coach Powers down here, and they're trying to tell Shannon something. Shannon, Shannon actually came up real tight on him on the line of scrimmage. I, I was thinking, I said, well, you know, he's got some speed. It looks like, you know, he's going to back off, and he broke in behind him, and that, that, area, that area was open. He just had the tip of a foot out of bounds when he caught the ball, and that saved it from being a first down in Corbin territory. So Lafayette now has it third down, 12 to go from their own 40-yard line. Johnson goes wide to the right side, covered by Miracle over there. Martin back to throw. Martin looks. He's looking for Johnson. Airs it out. Way down there. Ferris goes up, knocks it down. Almost had the interception. Kelly Ferris played that like a center fielder that time. Had his eye on it all the way. Kelly had it all the way. He did a good job. Had both hands on it. Johnson actually slid right in there real close to him. Too close. You just don't like to have to deal with people like Big Johnson. The potential is there on every play. But here they have it fourth down and 12 for the first down. Clock stopped on the incomplete pass. And Corbin will drop back two people, Steely and Hoover. And they're standing inside the 25-yard line. Neal in punt formation as he's back at his own 25. Lafayette has only one first down here in the first half, but it's tied at seven all. High snap, but he gets it out of there. And Hoover will call for the fair catch and takes it up at the 31 or 32s. So each time Corbin has had the football tonight, they've had it around the 31-yard line. The first offensive series at the 31, the second 33, the third the 33, and now to split the difference on their fourth offensive series of the half, they have it at the 32-yard line. Three minutes and 10 seconds, and for Corbin, that's enough time to march it downfield. I'm trying to think if we go to our three-minute offense, or we just go ahead and try to grind it out and get it on up the field. Let's see what they do. Toby Stevens wide to the right at end, out of the eye formation, playing the tailback slot is Dale Fox. Ahead of him is Hart. Hand off to Fox, straight up the middle he comes, and Fox wedges it out for about three to the 35. Again, he's coming off that side. He got uh, Barnett and, uh, no, I'm not. I'm sorry. I keep getting Barnett mixed up with Lynn Reeves. Got Lynn Reeves, made a good block on that. He got Carter on that side. And it looks like Sipe. Sipe's in there at guard. Hounds will have it second down and seven. Two minutes and 45 seconds to go now. Score tied at seven all. Fox will be a wing to the right side. Here's Jackson, straight up the middle again to Stevens. Stevens cracks across, loses the ball. Lafayette's got it. Had the first down, but could not hold on to the football. And the young man who is showing good running prowess here tonight has coughed it up. That Toby made a good run on it. He's actually stopped at the line of scrimmage and broke one and got on out there and just lost the handle on the ball. Lafayette will have it at the Corbin 42-yard line. Well, they have time now with two minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first half. Vic Johnson will go a wing to the right. They have a slot man to the left side. As the handoff, oh, given to George, who's tackled by Hensley on a beautiful stop behind the line. It's one of the best down linemen in the state of Kentucky, Mark Hensley. Did an excellent job that time. Loss of two to the 44-yard line, and Mark was on Antoine George before he knew what hit him. Johnson goes out of the lineup this time. 
A minute 47 to go in the first half. As I said, Lafayette has only one first down in the ball game, but the score is tied at seven all. They have it at the Corbin 44. It's a slot to the left again. Martin back to throw. Martin looking downfield for Neal. He's airing it out down there. And intercepted by Ferris at the 5, 10, 15. Kelly Ferris coming back to the 25. Up that sideline to the 30. And down he goes at about the 31 or 32. Kelly Ferris played that beautifully as Lexington Lafayette had Jeff Neal on a sprint right down the center of the field. And it was up for grabs, but Ferris got it. Don't play it any better than that. Kelly did an excellent job that time. He had two defenders back there. The ball went through one of them right into Kelly. He's playing center field back there, and he got some good run back on it. Did a good job protecting the ball, too, whenever they closed on him. Did an excellent job. Well, as it's been all night, Corbin gets it at the 31-yard line, but now the time is the difference. We're down to a minute, two seconds in the first half, and the Hounds have it first and 10 from the 31. Stevens right out to the left side. Jackson under, Jackson back to throw. Jackson looking, dumps it across the line of scrimmage, no good. Clock stopped at 50 seconds. The pass intended for Dale Fox. Corbin in passing tonight is one for three. Pardon me, two for four. As we've had Steely pick up a couple of them thus far tonight. Clock stopped with 50 seconds to go in the half now. Second down and 10 at the 31 yard line. Score tied at 7-all. Big crowd looking on from Campbell Field and Corbin. Corbin 2-0 on the year. Lafayette 1-1. One one. Ben Hoover wide out to the left side. Handoff is given to Fox. Fox trying to run up the middle. Gets short yardage to the 35 and taken down after a four-yard pickup. Number 39 for the Generals made a good made a good tackle on him. He met him met him one on one. That wasn't a tackle that Dale went down on last week. Never went down with anybody one on one last week, but he made an excellent tackle. Fox has carried the ball 14 times for 62 yards thus far tonight. Much tougher yardage here tonight than last week when he picked up 216 yards, averaging 145 yards per ball game in the first two. 15 seconds to go on the third down play. Ben Hoover gets the call for the first time. Hoover is stopped after it gets about three yards off the right side to about the 38. And with that, Corbin was going to let the time run out, but Lafayette stops the clock with five seconds to go. So a last ditch desperation move for Lafayette, hoping that something will develop for them on perhaps the kick play or the final play of this first half. Well, you've got the speed. Lafayette's got speed. All they got to do is get somebody back there. Now, what, obviously, what we're going to try to do is go ahead and punt the ball out of bounds and not let anybody get a hand on it. Our punter is not in action tonight, Brian Metzger. So it'll be interesting to see what does happen. I think if we ran the ball, uh, they have no, no chance of getting the ball back with only five seconds. So it's, it's, it's really an opportunity for us to do something offensively here and hope that we can break the long one because to punt it, you gain nothing. To keep the ball, you run out the time. And I'm pretty sure on fourth down, and we only have a couple of yards to go for the first down, that Corbin will keep the ball here. So the timeout utilized by Lafayette, their final one of this half, and Corbin comes out in uh, the power formation. Just five seconds now. Jackson calls, he gives, here's Fox. Fox off that left side. Fox gets five more yards up to the 45-yard line. Well, let's give him seven on that play because he got to the 45, but time has run out here in the first half. Donnie Step with Bill Hoover, Dale Johnson, and Fred Hall here on WYGO and Southern Cablevision with Corbin Lexington Lafayette football at halftime. The score, Corbin 7, Lafayette 7. 